Hey y'all, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back while I'm up talking and in the mood and got all this makeup and stuff on. <coughs> Let's jump into number three. Mr. What do I call him? Mr. Experiment. This was after Mr. Convenience. Me and Mr. Convenience stopped talking in like September. I stopped talking. I started talking to Mr. Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, I was already moved on from Mr. Convenience. And I met Mr. Experiment at another job that I was working at. I was working at a warehouse. I met him there. Um... I call him Mr. Experiment because I was 23 and he was 19. <laughs> Woo! How the tables have turned. And he was 19. Um, when I first met him, our first interaction, I hated his guts. I really did. I literally wanted to fight this man. Like, I wanted to punch him in the face, fight him, knock him down, do whatever I could do to hurt him. He was just getting on my nerve. Oh! He was so sick name. But <laughs> things did change and we were able to work on a project together at work side by side all day. And I saw a side of him that I, I didn't I didn't know was there that I didn't see before. And I just saw a guy that was young in a world of adults, of older adults. And he was just trying to prove himself like, okay, I'm not a child. Treat me like an adult. Because technically he was. Um... He was super cute, you know. He was really cute. I always thought he was cute, but you know. Um. Anyway, so after we worked together, he basically said, not in these terms, but okay, I like you. That's why I've been getting on your nerve because I like you. He said something like, "Um, it, it's like kids in the sandbox when you um hit the girl and run off." He was like, "I'm dang near about to throw sand in your face to prove to you that I like you." He said something along those lines. So I'm just like, okay. And like I said, I was still trying to, even though I was past it, well, not past it, I was still trying to get over Mr. Convenience and forget all that stuff that was going on. So I was like, okay, why not talk to this guy? He's interested. He's cute. I'm a little interested after I got to know him personally one-on-one. -on -one. So let's get into it. This relationship was very short. I spent maybe two and a half to three months with him because he was going off into the military he was going into boot camp to be a marine um we had such a connection at work like everybody noticed it everybody um thought that he was gonna come back and marry me because that's how close we were like we would see each other all day at work for eight hours at work we would be on lunch together and i would take him home after work like and even on the weekends if he didn't have anything like if he didn't have to go to training or anything like that we would be together we would always you know hang out go out i met his family met his sister his brother his mom his stepdad all of that um and i think that's what drew me to him because he already had a goal that he was going towards. And he wasn't going to let anyone get in his way. He already, At 19, he already had his mind made up on what he wanted to do in life. And that was kind of a, a blessing and a curse. The blessing was, I love a man with a vision. I love a man that know, knows where he's going. But then he also had this attitude of, if you're not doing what I'm doing, then what are you doing you see what i'm saying so it's just like okay i understand that's what you want to do but everybody else has have their own path to go towards to make it to how they want to make it you see what i'm saying not everybody want to go in the marines or not everybody wants to you know everybody has their own dream focus and everything like that so so that was like a downside to a plus side um our first date what did we do oh i remember we went to the movies i cannot remember what we watched it was what did we watch? Oh, I know. John Wick. We watched the very first John Wick. Um, and he was super sweet. Um, gave me a kiss at the end. He tricked me, actually. We got we went to the movie, got something to eat, and I took him. No, he was driving that night. Um, so, whatever. So, um, when I went, we, no. He was driving to come meet me, and then we drove my car. Yeah, that's how it went. 
So after the date, he tricked me into kissing him. He was like, well, if you don't want to kiss me on my lips, then go ahead and kiss me on my cheek. So when I went to kiss him on his cheek, he kissed me. Super sweet. He was a super sweet guy. He just was an asshole at times. But I'm an asshole, so we see each other. Um, And so that was our first date. Our best times, I want to say it was all. I mean, like I said, I like to pick. I like to argue. So there was some time I was picking. But I want to say that two and a half months. I felt as though that two and a half months to three months, we did so much. We talked about so much. I felt as though we did so much more than the five and a half years I did with Mr. Convenience. It's the truth. I always wanted to go see the lights. He took That was like one of our last things that we did together. He took me to go see the lights um, downtown or wherever it's located. I can't remember. And we just had a good time together. When we talked on the phone, we talked about our goals, our aspirations, what we, what we wanted to do. Like, we could sit on the phone for hours and just talk about our goals. Like, and I loved that about him. I really did. Um, you know, we got it. Got it in a few times before he left. <laughs> but, um, and when, so when he went off, when things got bad, okay, well, he went off to boot camp and we stayed in touch. It's called the snail mail when someone's in boot camp. The, like, the limit is the part you're going to get, like, three letters. They don't have all, all, all the time to be writing you and whatever. So he wrote me three letters. I really wish I would have, if I known what I know now, Back then, I would have kept those letters to read those letters to you. Um, but we definitely kept in touch. But all of a sudden, when he was about to get out, everything stopped. Communication, everything stopped. At that point in my life, I was so tired of being screwed over by men. I was tired of being hurt. So what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I went knock knocking at that door that he used to live at. Because I couldn't take it anymore. I was just like, what's going on? And if you want me to find anybody for y'all, if he's trying to hide, I can find him for you. Because, you know, you got to read between the lines. Y'all got to read, you know, the contact clues. So I couldn't find him. He didn't have anything on his Facebook or whatever. So I know he always talked about this certain person. I went on their page, found him. I was like, oh, he got a boot camp. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to go ride up on him. Da, 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 da. I was so tired of being hurt, y'all. So tired of being hurt. So, one day after work, I was like, you know, I told my sister, I was like, you know what, I'm going, I'm going to his house. I can't take him, I'm going to his house. So, I went. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, is he here? Oh, no, he's not here, but they told me this whole story, blah, 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 blah. I got, I actually got his cousin's number, someone's number. They gave me the number, and I called that number until I couldn't call that number no more, y'all. I was tripping. Yes, I was. I moved past that now. But anyway, so when I finally got in touch with him, everything about him was different. Like, boot camp really changed. Like, his demeanor, his aura, his everything. Um, and we went out to Hooters. We went out to Hooters, and we just caught up in everything. But that was it. He told me that he would, because he had to go off again to do more training or whatever. Um, and he was like, yeah, I'm going to keep in touch and I'm going to hit you up. And after that, it was nothing. And I think what sucked about that one the most was he, because we had such a bond at work. After he left and after he did what he did, everybody at work was just like, well, how is he? How's he doing? Have you seen him? Have you talked to him? Blah, blah. I'm just like, I think don't fuck with me. Like, I don't know, you know? Um, and so the biggest lie that he ever told me was, like, in his letters, like, I can't wait to come back home. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to spend time with you, X, Y, and Z. And I don't know what changed, but, and it's literally nothing more I can say about this situation because I don't know. I know that now um, he's married. You know, I'll be Facebook stalking. So, and he did ask me to be his friend on Facebook, but he doesn't post anything. So, I went on, you know, contact clues and went on other people's pages to find out he was married. But, and I wish him all the best. No hard feelings. Um, it was a very short-lived relationship. And that was that. So, I'm sorry that I couldn't give you more on Miss Experiment. And I call him Miss Experiment because I feel as though, because he was so young, he wanted to be with an older 
woman or someone over, you know, the age of 21 or whatever to say that he's been with, oh yeah, I've been with someone X, Y, and Z older than me. So I'm saying four years older than me. So that's why I call him this experiment. Um, but like I said, we had some good times and the bad time didn't come until he ditched me and ghosted my ass at the boot camp. <laughs> so the more of this story is. Ooh, what's the more of this story, y'all? I think I'm going to need y'all to come up with the more of this story. I don't know. I can't give it to you. If I do come up with the more of the story, I will leave it all up and through here. Or I will leave it down in the description box. But tell me what you guys took from this down in the comments. Let me know down below how you felt about this situation. Alright, so like, share, comment, and subscribe. And remember, love it or leave it. Bye.